It's, it's kind of dirty in here. I work in here a lot, you know. I come in here sometimes, once a year maybe, and just look at some of them here. I can pretty much play it back. You guys know we've wanted to talk to Harry Gant for a really long time, and it finally happened. Like most of these older guys, he can't hear that well. So to ask him a question, it felt like you had to yell at him. And that felt kind of weird, but it ended up not mattering because whatever he chose to talk about was just really cool. It was worth listening to. He didn't really have any questions because he would he's such a great storyteller that you just want to pull up a chair and listen. And that's exactly what you guys are going to do right now. And we hope you enjoy it. I, I usually drive one of these to walk. I go walk uh, at my daughter's house there at farm two miles every morning. So I carry a jacket. <laughs> you don't never know it's going to be too cold. I like to walk in cold weather. I don't run, I just walk fast. Go two miles and about 34 minutes uh, come back home. The mo. <laughs> Is it 15 minutes a mile? That's yeah. that's not far off from what we'll I go, walk when I go walking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just but I got where I can just do it really easy, you know. And one day it started raining. I was about about two tenths away, and I found out I could run a long way <laughs> if you need to. But uh, I work hard at the farm doing stuff. We just hanging a door out the head. See, I see, I stuck a nail here, a nail ahead of a nail, big <laughs> nail, uh, in the barn. And we got a big. Uh, shed down there. There's a big barn over there and put these big nails in here to hang drop cords and things on. I had a roll-up door on the front of that other one. So I said, I should get another roll-up door. So I just got it hung, got it going here and I was in there dark. I didn't have a lot of lights on in the main part. And I'm coming up there real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Nail head caught right here yeah. and jerked that back. It's just now f scabs gone. See, it's white. <laughs> yeah. And I said, they said, you're walking too fast. Yeah. The 57 there is, I've had it the longest. I've had it since 67. Wow. <laughs> really? And uh, uh, we've changed the suspension on it and it's got a, 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 a GTO rear end so you can get gears. And it's, it's a little wider. This is Camaro front end. Do you do the restoration yourself? Huh? Did you do the restoration yourself? I can't hear real loud. Sorry. <laughs> I can't hear either. It's okay. I talk soft. <laughs> Did you restore it yourself? Yeah. But it, it really didn't need it. Uh, I, I didn't run it that much, you know, like I got it, like I said, in 67. And uh, as you can see, I drive it now. Got bugs and everything. <laughs> but it... Uh, I had one of these in 57. I bought a new one in 1957. And so I changed the engine in it, and uh, it's got a cr crate engine now. They come all together, and uh, it's a lot more horsepower, four speed in it. And, that, and uh, I guess it was ni uh, 91. Uh, my son in law, he works on cars up here, and a friend of mine had a 57, and he had restored it. Beautiful. Well, mine looked good. But his looked better than good, <laughs> you know, re the bumpers and all. And, but I didn't have to do much. Uh, I just polished most of them. And uh, that piece of gray in the panel, that's all the th stuff was changed. You can, this old stainless steel, you can polish it and get the little pits out of it. My son-in-law, he painted it. <laughs> and, uh, I, didn't, uh, I, was, I just wanted to get a regular paint job because he don't paint. Of my race cars, and uh, he, he paint. I said, Well, I got to go to race this week and paint the hood, and uh, I'll come back home and see how it looks. And I did, I come back, and man, it looks sharp. It's, I mean, it's 91, that's been a long time. Yeah, that's a really nice one. See, this one here it was restored in 1980. It, it's a a local car. It's it's original. This one was in the museum at Daytona, and I trade that man a race car for it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. See, it's all new. It's a uh, other well, stuff too, but this one got it had uh, 150 miles since it'd been restored. It was in stored restored in North Carolina, hmm. in Greenville, and uh, this is all original. I mean, I've replaced it. You can get all this stuff for several years. 
headliner and all. See, that's got the crate engine in it. Oh yeah, you drive this thing a lot. Yeah. Love to see it. This one's all stock. Stock everything. No power steering runs off the back of that generator. Huh. Now they, that no has got an alternator. <laughs> uh, okay, I went down to, uh, it's in the Daytona Museum. And uh, we was racing Daytona last year, 94. A guy that, he'd get, to, he'd get us rooms down to Daytona. Here's your main drive going in, Daytona's on the right. You go over the street back there, and they got all these houses that the pilots own, and they rent them out in speed week. And we had a house rented with a guy that's sort of in charge. He knew the man that owned the museum down there, right there at Daytona. Uh, it used to be Mark Martin Museum. I don't mm -hmm. know what's the name there now. And so what they done, he, we, he took us up there after practice at Daytona. And so we got ready with a pearl of man on it. Beautiful museum. And this thing here was sitting uh, up here, a big wall, a big picture of Daytona uh, stands. I mean, a mural as big as they ever see. This thing was cocked up on one side, sitting on a racetrack like this. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it had a ribbon around there that said "Do not touch." <laughs> and, uh, but it just on and on. So we was just ready to leave, and the guy that was showing us, he said, "We got some more race cars back here." Went through the door, and they had Indy cars, everything you think of big drivers, AJ Fort, and all them people. I couldn't believe it. We was leaving, and he and his wife met us as we was coming out the door. He said, you see anything in here that you like? And I said, yeah. He said, what's that? I said, that red 57 <laughs> sitting up there. And so he said, what it is that people take them there and leave them, and if he can sell them, if they want to sell them, he'll sell them. And he said, uh, yeah, I said, I didn't know you had all them race cars back here. And I said, I'll trade you a race car for it because that's going to give me the last car at the, at, at the end of the race. But we only had one car, so we had to run all season. That was February. Hmm. We got to go. And so I had a Daytona car. Then when we ran everywhere, you know, now they got 25 cars. <laughs> so, yeah. so he said, this laughed and left. Well, the next day at the racetrack, the little guy took us over. He said, he checked with whoever owned it, and they said, do it, you know. So uh, he said, I got that all fixed up. Well, I'm still letting it, you know. Anyway. So come back home, and I had a letter. It was from down there. It was a contract to sign <laughs> that I give him number 33 race car. And I said, now, I had to put this in this contract. If I crash it, I, don't, I ain't, won't have one to sell. <laughs> and, but was lucky, go all the way. And... We was working over at the farm. We'd been painting and all. And uh, I got to get the car. We finished the race and we had another car. But next year, there's going to run Monte Carlo's anyway. And so they had this and ready. All right, we go to Asheville, borrow my brother in law's uh, trailer and enclosed and truck. And we take off up there. And it was so cold, man. It was. It was uh, a day before Thanksgiving, I believe it was. And, uh, so you go out there and it didn't crank. There wasn't no fuel cell in it. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to put that thing in. It was cold and it was getting later. And uh, we was going to come home and change clothes and all, you know, and go to Florida. And we heading back down. At 40, we coming down there just to get it, you know. And man, it's getting late. We passed a sign that said Tatersville. <laughs> I said, Wayne, I think we look well enough. Let's just keep on going to Florida. <laughs> so we just went on down to Florida. We got there about two. A hotel right out there off the interstate. And uh, got us a uh, wake-up call for eight. And so we got ready to go out there at nine. ESPN was out there, you know, and the guy that was there that owned his car. And uh, we unloaded that race car out of there. It's full running, full board race car. We just... All they done is painted it up a little bit, had the same motor and all that. So <laughs> I, I backed it out of the trailer and I went all the way around that, that 
his museum hall and come back around and parked it. And uh, they was filming it, so then I got in this one. And I went all the way around and come back and drove it up into the trailer. <laughs> and had more little deal. He gave me the keys and all, you know, when I've done that, the uh, four running around the house. And, uh, so we come back up the road with him and got back here. And that's us. That's, I drove it, uh, it had 150 miles on it since it's been restored. And I think I got about a thousand now. Hmm. I, I go out this road through the caution line. I go out to Highway 16. It's eight miles and two tenths from right here. Hmm. I go down and turn and come back here. Sometimes I'll go down 64. Up Highway 9 is, used to be the main road right here. The railroad tracks go out there. Sometimes I go down to Stacheville, it's about 15 miles, and turn and come back the old way to make it. Makes the tire smooth out and everything. And Keep it running good. Yeah, I, I kind of try, but I really hate to do it. Got looking front end like that. <laughs> if you see, I've got a few bugs, but I don't wipe them down much when I come in. And it's here, Mercury right here. It's got a. Uh, this is original car. It's not been painted or anything. Original motor. Uh, it's a flathead. <laughs> That's cool. You know what a flathead is? Yeah, we like flatheads. <laughs> yeah. All I done is took that big old oil bath off. That's all I've done and put this battery on. I mean, this air cleaner. I put these headers on it. Hey, a little story goes back here. When I got 16, uh, I had to get a car. And, uh, I just had got my permit, started looking around. I was looking at a 50 Ford, 50 Chevrolet around places. My dad, he had a 55 Oldsmobile, and uh, I got a place back over here we call Dog Crossing. It's a race for about two miles, and uh, they meet there every Saturday night. And so when I got my permit, you could, back then you could have a licensed driver with you. And so we, Dad had that brand new Oldsmobile, and we went to Dog Crossing. There's a Ford and a Chevrolet lining up there to race. And I said, I'm gonna follow you. <laughs> but I didn't follow him very long and I passed him. And, uh, I, I, and I come on home. And, uh, it was everywhere the next day. And I said, you're going to have to get you a car. That new Oldsmobile. Yeah, yeah, Oldsmobiles, would, it would do over 120. And, uh, so a guy in Taylorsville had one just exactly like his car, green. And my dad, he said, I know him real well. We used to, dad was in the lumber business some, and I help some of my net, old sawmills, that uh, raise cotton. Went up there, he said, my friends got this car for sale. It's just like this, everything, even the keys like that. <laughs> yeah. So went up there and looked at it. Well, it's a plain Jane. Uh, wasn't too cool looking for a 16-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it didn't have no miles on it. He lived right there in town. And, uh, said this three-year-old car and people didn't run a hundred miles in a year so we got it and it, uh, it would just fly <laughs> it, I'm telling you it would just fly and it's same as this same color same everything uh, interior everything so car and copy is saying here and I had that thing for about a year and a half and uh, I was coming out this road to, to, to school I picked up a friend of mine I couldn't see. And I said, um, Gail, can you see on your side? And I'm just rolling along, just nearly to that store. And there's a big old sawmill there. And uh, he said, I probably can. So I can see the edge right here. I'm doing like 20. <laughs> Boom! My face, I'll tell you, it knocked me crazy. I thought one of them big trucks hit us. <laughs> and uh, golly, the door flew open. And, uh, my foot got hooked between the clutch and the brake. And I'm pedaling with this foot here. That's, that's how slow I was going. I could keep up. <laughs> but there's a barbed wire fence there that went in that crack in the door. And it, I was hanging to the steering wheel way out here. And it just tore my britches. <laughs> like then you wore dress clothes to school, you know, in high school. And uh, man, my nose was hurting. I didn't, I, this guy's standing there. I said, who hit us? He said, well, you hit me. And I said, how can we hit you? And he had a 98 O's. 
1952 Oldsmobile, four door. And that fence opened the back out, big old fence gate. And he parked it and the, it's right in our side. The wheel was right there, white line. Hmm. And I hit him at about 20, just, I wasn't ready, you know. And, and I didn't know what happened. It didn't go about 25 feet out there. This thing's got the biggest frame I've ever seen on any kind of car. Even race cars ain't got frames this big. They got a big cross member here. Then it, it's got a, what to call a gusset, you know? Mm -hmm. The exhaust pipes go, go through it back here. It goes all the way back out here to a, a cross member. And it's got three cross members in it. You see where them exhaust pipes, if you can see? <laughs> and the back's the same way. Yeah. It's heavy frame. But see, back then, nobody had stru frames straight. It, you know, it looked bad. The hood was up like this, the horns were blown, <laughs> and the headlights were smashed out, and the bumper bent. But I could probably have fixed it, you know. And uh, they pulled up there where they take the nationwide insurance cars. And uh, so they t took it up there, and yeah, I was sick, sick, sick. I went in there, and the adjuster come out there and looked at it. He went all the way around on it. I washed it every day and I waxed it every day and I kept the motor original paint. Everything on it was original. But they, they give me like $1,150 you know, for it. And uh, so uh, at 1200 I get I had $50 deductible. So I went straight up there to the Chevrolet place and 57s was out, but they wasn't out yet. Like October, they come out. In, in 56. Hmm. They had six down there in the showroom. They kept them hid until, until about November or so. You'd slip around and go see what your new cars look like. Hmm. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, we had a, fit, had a 57 up there. And the same boy bought this the same time I bought, bought he bought this the same time I bought mine. They were just alike. And, uh, but anyway, we uh, went up there and bought a 57. But ever since then, I see a, one of these for sale. It's a really a good driving car, a riding car. <laughs> yeah, the, these things get gas models as, as good as a four-cylinder does now. Yeah, the, we left here one Friday night, four of us going to, or five, going to Myrtle Beach in yeah, 1956 <laughs> and filled up the gas. And we head to Myrtle Beach. Well, we're actually going to get stopped. There in Jefferson, somewhere there. You know, what that bypass wasn't there then, and so that cost us thirty-five dollars. <laughs> well, that took the bulk of our money. We went on down to the beach, and you rent what nothing there then. Just little houses up through there, no furniture, no mattress here and there, you know. And the road, the ocean, and downtown, uh, they, the old roller coaster was still was there then. At, then. And but this sand dunes, wasn't there hotels? Nothing. And we rented that thing for five dollars for uh, Friday night and Saturday night. <laughs> and we cruised around spinning the wheels, you know, and all playing football out there and I would go in the ocean. So we come back home Sunday and come all the way through Charlotte, nearly to uh Mooresville before we put any gas in. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Could you believe that? Yeah. Golly. Well, this one here seemed like it's the same way. It's got that overdrive. And this one didn't have overdrive. Mine did, but I put it in here. I, I saw a cell work in here. You know, hmm. I built this uh, transmission. We traded it. I uh, found a, another, uh, it's an older transmission, but it's the same thing. And it's overdrive, so it's in here now. And I put that in Dilly sauce. My other one, though, that I bought from that old guy, it, it must have come that way because he, he wouldn't have changed anything. I really like it. <laughs> but see, the tops are high. They're high on 50, 50 Ford Chevrolets. And uh, this thing was in a museum. It come from St. Louis, but it was in a museum in Wisconsin. And we was up there to a friend of ours funeral that ride the Kyle Petty ride every year. Mm -hmm. And he worked for Mannheim Auction, so he used to sponsor the Bush car I drove. And he, she, he passed away. And it's been about three or four months, and his wife wanted to have a deal for the, all the riders. And so well, it's a pretty good crowd. We went up there, and, I, and a friend of mine saw this on eBay. <laughs> so he told me, so I looked at the computer, and uh, man, that's just like the one I had. And, uh, so 
I called up there. I said, I've got to be there Friday. I went in there, and uh, I walked in, and you had about 75 cars. You know, you can see this thing tops higher. <laughs> but the deal is, uh, all them old cars, see that right here, this right here is the window up. This, uh, you got from the window up, see here? You know, it's roughly, you know, something like that or so. Well, see this here. You, once you pass this, it goes higher all the way back because everybody wore hats, <laughs> felt hats. You watch uh, movies on TV and uh, that my, that cars and food made America. Everybody wore hats. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But uh, I like it. Uh, I, I done this like I did my car, got my car. I put mirrors on it, wasn't no mirrors. I put fender skirts and I put some 55 Oldsmobile spinner. And so far I hadn't got that changed. And, and uh, these tires here, uh, see it's kind of yellow looking. I had to put new tires on it because, see this is a portal wall. See? Uh, well, hmm. that was the story of that thing. See I put new tires and the numbers that he had like back in was like a 670, 680, you know, wider and bigger. Well, then yet the numbers now is a whole bunch of numbers. So he mounted up one, the OD was the same, but it's a little wider. Them tires used to be three and a half wide, these are wider. And so I just went ahead and got four, called I had a new, these are a new set here. It had set on it and a set in the trunk. It hadn't even been used, it was white. Four new tires. I pulled that thing back and it, the old tar was rotten, so it just come out on it. it. had a big split in it. I was messing around here one day, and I said, man, I hate taking things over there and take it apart and mount them tars again and all. I'll just get me some paint, and I call Lowe's. And they told me, I said, I've seen there's some paint that'll stay on rubber. And so I went down, they mixed me up a quart, and man, they just shine. You could kind of hold that back and put you, and go around, you just had to watch. I ain't never got the time to, paint the rim there yet. It, that's pretty dull red there. And, but anyway, and it looked super. And then it started getting brown. <laughs> and I worked and I worked and I worked. And I, I sanded one whole day with sand paper. Nothing will take it off. No chemical will take it off. And so I finally, a little stove, I jack up one wheel at a time. And I finally got it white. <laughs> and it looked good. Well, it takes it about three months, and it started coming up back to brown again. <laughs> now I just jacked it up and done it again. Well, that's the last time I'd done it, because a, a guy come in here, a friend of a friend of mine, knows everything about cars, knows everything. The smartest person I've ever talked to. He, he knows history. He said, well, when, wait, when they come out with white wall towers back in so-and-so year, back then, uh, they had this, this, and this, what makes them. Well then, and I can remember this, you go buy a new tire at Esso station, they had a real good deal. You bought an expensive set of tires, but you paid so much a month. And they'd come wrapped real tight in paper and you'd, you'd throw them down real hard to bust that paper off, real hard paper, like tape, like a, and you put them on your car. Well, this guy's told me, that's, when they come out, when they quit using that paper and all, and they started making these newer tires like this here, he told me what they had in it, and it will burn through a portal wall. Hmm. But the back back there ain't as, it's not as bad, but uh, it, uh, that's what it is. And so I said, if I'd paint them one more time, maybe yeah. it'd be so thick, maybe it could. <laughs> but, but you know, who would ever thought that they, compound that they done in rubber, but you talking a long time ago, yeah. in the 50s, you know. Yeah. As soon as the portal ball come out, you can get them in 50, uh, 1954, you had portal, that's probably what these were. Like I say, he had 75 cars, and this saw one you could see the top higher than that whole bunch of cars. So this is kind of like a representation of your first race car then? Yeah, you were oh yeah. Racing. yeah. <laughs> see, with overdrive transmission, it's got them extra two gears in every gear. And you take off and it's got some weights in there and it, and it changes. If you're in low, it'll change. And you put it in second gear and it'll take off and let, let off and it changes again. But you can really shift it and not even use the clutch until hmm. it gets past them. 
like 28 mile an hour or something. So if you're racing somebody, you know, you just, you're in a lower gear. It's, it's what you hear and start with a low, low. And it, wow, just jam that thing up there. <laughs> and then, you know, and then mash it down to the passing gear on the floor. And it, it take you on up about 75 or 80 and pull it back and high and mash it back down <laughs> to low range high. And it's a big difference. Uh, you get out and road them and you get about 100, 105, and it drops back in overdrive. It, it do 110. My car, with that speed on, it's going to do 110 on a level road. You had to go down a hill for it to go any more than that. <laughs> but it's so quick. If you're just going to drag for a little ways, it's low, 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 all the gears, you know, a quarter mile. Uh, it, so you were drag racing for, from a stop? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's got some tricks to it too. What you got to do? You got to park it in reverse, uh, unless you if, if 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 unless you got this lever. It's got a lever here. If it's in overdrive, though, it won't. It'll roll off. But you know, I had overdrive in the '57 and my Mercury both, and I didn't even know that they'd roll off. That's just automatic. You put it in reverse. <laughs> Is that what that chrome handle is down there? Is that yeah, for the overdrive? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that's how that works. Yeah. That, there's original seats, seat covers and all. Uh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the story behind this Corvette? Yeah, that's 74. I, I bought it in 77. And uh, well, I think about 70,000 miles because when I got it, uh, we had just uh, gotten a steakhouse business back then in Western Steer. And we had one part interest in one in uh, Lenore, which is about 24 miles from here. Well, you're putting 50 miles a day on it, you know. It puts a lot of miles on it. And we had it in the steakhouse for 10 years. There was a funny story that Harry told us when we first got there before we started filming. We had just pulled in, we were talking to him a little bit, and his phone rings. He uses a flip phone from like 2004. He gets a phone call from a telemarketer and he says something funny to them and hangs up on him. And then he told us that sometimes when he gets those uh, phone calls like trying to sell him solar panels or something, he pretends to be 94 years old. He said, he'll answer the phone, be like, oh, I'm 94 years old, I gotta talk to my grandson. Like, <laughs> something like that. He said they hang up on him when he does that. And I was like, dang, that was a funny story. I wish the camera was on, but I just wanted to share that with you because that's the kind of guy Harry is. He's a cool dude. Out right, there's a, I'll show you a picture of this here, Firebird. Somewhere along here. Oh, it's gonna be at the bottom. See that there? <laughs> we made it. See, no rules. That thing looked a little long, though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I added six inches to the front end. Six inches? Yeah. And, uh, right in here? Yeah. To put the... But it just flew. I mean, just, it done qualified 201. <laughs> And it's got a restrictor plate on it. That's about 50, uh, 500 horsepower. We, the motor had 800, and we running was about 450. It's really a good car, though. We, we won that and won uh, Charlotte. And then we went back to Daytona, and uh, it missed. Uh, it didn't miss, the fuel pressure would go down. When you go in the corner up on the bank, it blah, 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 blah and I'd fall back, you know, and then they'd take off, catch a guy in front there, he just had a, it was an IROC Camaro, and that's, a lot of them wasn't that new a car, most of them was open wheel, uh, smaller cars. And uh, so anyway, we ended up finishing second. <laughs> Man, we changed everything on it. And we couldn't figure what it was. And uh, so we go back to, uh, to Daytona again. And this was uh, 77 when I won it. We went back down there again. <laughs> and it does the same thing. And we just, you cut the fuel pressure gauge, it just go like that. Then you get on the straightaway, but it, it just missed. Hmm. Then it take off. It, uh, so anyway, I was running a tire test in Charlotte when they paved it. I don't know why they wanted me to go run it. Goodyear did, because uh, that's just a 2,800-pound car. And, uh, so I went there and practiced and scuffed in a whole bunch of tires and run them. And they asked me would I come back the next day and run a pretty good ways on a set that they chose to do. And uh, 
So I go back down there at 10 o'clock that morning and uh, warmed it up out there and scuffed them tires in. And that's about all. He said, I want you to run uh, 20 or 10 left. That's a long way at Charlotte, you know, sort of boring out there just by yourself. <laughs> and I'd been, I tested for, well, I've run Firestones everywhere, uh, but Winston Cup, they, you couldn't run them there, like Goodyear. So uh, Goodyear had me down there testing them things and without a stretcher plate. It's, it was full board 800 horsepower. And to be testing, be successful where they keep you testing is don't overdrive it. Like I say, some, you gotta do 20 sets usually. So they'll say how to set this set feel compared to set 10. <laughs> you know, one, two, ten, and you got to keep it a little bit in your mind yeah. what to do. Well, this is it. Just give us about three hot laps out there. So I did. I made one down, and we didn't have any radios on, so he held the board up and said, pit, next lap. I said, I'm going to really let this thing out. And I just drove it real deep into turn one. Just, I mean, it stuck like glue. Down that back stretch, that's the fastest I'd ever been in my life, down that back stretch. <laughs> and they told me to run a tail, uh, Talladega uh, with restrictor play. And uh, no, no restrictor play. That's for the straight went down there and for uh, GM, Chevrolet, give you a big old speed officer on the dash that's actual. See, they got the thing measured like 15 feet off the wall. And it's a little different for you just run the bottom if you count really how fast you're going. Mm -hmm. And they had that big old thing that's calibrated from drive shape somehow there. Anyway, down the back stretch, you're running 214. And you go in the corner, it go back to about 108. And every, every time you turn the wheel, it hand uh, to drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go through the trouble now, here you go again, here it goes. It goes where you know, about 210, 12. And just quick, you just a little bit, it would slow it right there. Then you'd hit that last run there and you get, oh, we was 214, the top fastest. And, uh, but uh, what was wrong with the Firebird down there, we didn't know it till I crashed it. At Charlotte, he said, go out there and run them laps. And like I say, I was going down the bike stretch. Uh, I'd never drove it without a restrictor plate. We all know sponsors keep race cars on the track, but they also keep these videos able to be coming to you on a regular basis. And today's video sponsor is America's largest injury law firm, Morgan & Morgan. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. Everything is completely free of charge unless they win your case. No upfront costs, no sign-up fees, all the paperwork, research, expert witnesses, negotiations, court hearings. It's all free unless they win. If you don't win your case, you pay nothing. People are often afraid to sue because they feel bad. When you sue for an injury, you're not suing the person who caused the injury, you're suing their insurance company who's sitting on billions of dollars. There's no reason to feel bad for getting the compensation you deserve. Did you know you can start a claim with the largest injury law firm in eight clicks or less? You can start your claim with Morgan & Morgan, www.forthepeople.com slash Stapleton42, or by dialing pound 529. That thing was just hitting the high spots. I mean, it was like a rocket. And I just made my turn up like that. Boom! I just heard that. It's just like, it's, it's over in a minute. And I, I, I went straight in the wall. Straight in the wall. And I didn't come to you. That was 10 o'clock that morning. You feel like you're dead. It hurts so bad. <laughs> but fortunately, it was built pretty light. And they, after that, uh, I'd heard a little bit about them Indy cars uh, would absorb a lot. And that was like, it's all spine tube. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, uh, I, when I, I could hear people talking. And uh, they'd roll you around and, oh, man, that hurt. And I said, I could hear people. But you never could see them. You could, like, close your eyes, that light. that come and go, but you couldn't see nobody. And uh, so finally... They kept me in there, they run x-rays, x-rays, but I couldn't breathe real good. And finally about uh, two in the morning, was that Charlotte? About two in the morning, they got me ready to come home. 
I said, you know, you just got fractures, fractures, sternal ribs here, broke collarbones. They always break down shoulder blades. And it just, that car is just smashed just like that. It went all the way down. This Miss Pit Road uh, opening, I mean, not opening, a pit wall. It went down through the invert off on the grass. It went all the way down and up the bank and turned one, stopped up wow. there. Wow. <laughs> With not even over no, like a bulldozer blade, flat as a pancake. Yeah. But anyway, I come home, they said, had a tremendous uh, uh, head injury, you know, to not let me go to sleep. The boy was there with me. He came here and kept me awake all night. And uh, at four o'clock, we left. I said, what you gonna do? We're going to Darlington and qualify today. So we went to Darlington and I couldn't even get, I couldn't even turn the switch on in the car. Yeah. <laughs> they done had, a, I'm really sore. And they, they told me the hospital was soaking water. Well, I didn't, but then I, this quick as I, when I got there, it was just 30 minutes left. Everybody done qualified. They let me qualify and I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't take no breath. And that, I thought it would be okay, but I took off out of the pits. I'm just going to do one lap because I went to breathe and I couldn't breathe. And if you go, you can hold your breath yeah. for 28 seconds. That's one lap runner. But you go out, and I ain't even high gear. <laughs> and I go in, he waving that green flag. And I went there and turned one, man, I just guessed at it. And out of the back stretch, these things just little, I call them fish eyes, floats by the eye, and, and you smell that old gas that they wake you up with. Uh, yeah, I don't know where that comes from, but I'll smell it every time you get knocked out. Yeah. I went through three or four, and I come off, and where I messed up to try to get another breath, it went, it went worse. <laughs> <laughs> and I seen that white flag, I saw it when I get, I got out, I, I, could, I thought I'd never get down to, back to the, where I was going. And I was going in, and I seen some people standing over there, and it was, and a guy had wrapped me solid with this bungee stuff. That didn't help a bit. I still couldn't breathe. And, uh, I passed out there, and I stopped, and they pulled me out of the car. I remember I could feel them pulling me, but I, then I went to the hospital, stayed all day. That's back when you qualified on Friday, and I stayed. You practiced Thursday, and we didn't do that either. But qualified Friday, I stayed all night in the hospital. I come back to the rooms. Kept filling that tub up with water and hot water and hot water. Stayed in there all day Friday and, uh, I mean, Friday night, Saturday. Saturday night all night and Sunday. Went to the racetrack. Now, I could breathe a little better, but I still hurt and really to get your arm to raise up and to get your foot up to get in that window. <laughs> I couldn't even put my uniform on. And, uh, so anyway, we started the race at uh, Believe it or not, I qualified third. <laughs> yeah, and uh, couldn't even remember it, really. And so then we didn't practice no, nobody. I don't favor anybody run my car or not, but anyway, we started third. Labonte's on the pole and Pearson, I don't know who was over here, but I'm, I'm on the inside. We take off through the green. It was sunshiny, bright, about two o'clock Sunday evening. We're going out through there, and well, when I got to over to the racetrack, this guy said, you need to go <laughs> to the hospital at Darlington. <laughs> it's like, a, it's just a little building, <laughs> about eight foot. They had a thing he laid out on. <laughs> it's that guy, he gave me some shots in my chest up here, all over me. Up the front, between every rib and up the back, between every rib, all up here in the collarbones. And uh, you, collarbone don't, ain't it. pulling the shoulder horn sometimes, it's kind of hurt, but you forget it. And they, race starts but yeah we was running and I'm running third right we was way ahead of most of them there and I, I said I'm gonna win this race here and I could tell my car was fast and we run this like the I think two or three laps halfway I think we made a couple pit uh, stops but I could catch back up really I just taking my time kind of I was feeling a lot better and so then uh, it started raining they come covered up everybody's car, but I had my head tied over here to the roll bar here, and I'd had pillars in the seat here, and all this stuff, you know. And uh, I went to sleep, and I slept till dark nearly, but they ain't got no lights down there. And about that time, 
motors cranked up every morning. I was sound asleep. I was dreaming. And I woke up and they jerked my cover off my car. And they were driving the track down for a long time. And they said, we're going to try to, on the radio, they told me, we're going to try to get five laps in under green. Because we didn't need, I think, two laps to make it halfway. And it's opening right now, and it looks pretty good. They come, and we're going around, but I cranked my car up, it missed. We thought it was water had run down before they got the cover on. It, I told Bob, I said, it won't clear out, there's something wrong. Just cranked it up. And he said, rush him over, I did. I said, no. So I told my spotter, tell the guy behind me to give me a little slack, because my car's going to be slow taking off. And he did. He backed out. They called me on the radio. Said they said they're going to black flag me if you don't <laughs> tighten up. <laughs> but every time I'd tighten up, it's too early. I waited, and I started going. That helped me take off on seven cylinders like it was. It, a rocker arm broke. Hmm. And so anyway, we go down through there and managed to stay there. So, so I'm doing pretty good. You, uh, they're just going to run like 10 laps. And you know, you're figuring how to keep up and what to do. And I, it felt like you could run wide open around the turn. And so about two or three laps before the end, I did. And uh, I'd come right up there to them. Then I'd lose about two car lengths, three down the back stretch. And I tried it in that turn, you know. And I lifted this a little, I just couldn't leave it down, you know. <laughs> it, I'd come up there and I could pull out a little bit if I wanted to, but I just stayed back and they waved the white flag. They went down there and turned one. And I done lost my momentum, but going in, Terry was leading the race and Pearson's over here. He'd been doing that kiss so while he dives down to the bottom. The left front tire hit the apron and it turns you around, you know. So he went into the slow. Here I come with my foot in the throttle. He bumped Terry, the back of Terry's car. They both just went like this. And so they're coming down the hill now, Terry was. He done hit the wall a little bit, not much. Pearson hit it harder. But I, I managed to gas down, and Terry come off and got in the throttle later, but with eight cylinders, you know. And so I got up about his back end, then you know, here we go. But I have to run it through one and two. Uh, I mean, three and four on the last step. And I, I could have, if I could have hadn't have let up, <laughs> I thought it was going to be a bigger wreck, but they just shot up the track and come down. But I was lucky I got right like that, you know. And so uh, I, I, got, I, I got okay, but uh, then don't have no trouble over it. So I guess it works out all right. Where did you build that Firebird at? Here. You're like here? Not in here, that garage up there. Oh, that was like your race shop at one point? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Huh. We kept going, going, running these Chevelles. Uh, this Nova, this was the last thing Nova's, but like right here, 57 right here. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I run a long time, see, they're going to go to uh, big cars. And, we, and uh, the series we was running in, and uh, then they about was going to build a Chevelle like this down here. That's Chevelle, 64 Chevelle. And so we just get started on it good. And then they're going to reinstate the 57s. Well, there was a, the 57s, a factory car was the fastest car on the racetracks, I think. It handled good and all. So we took off out there and kept that 57. And uh, we started winning the races just going away. And we went to the Baltimore Merlin up there to the racetrack right there in town. Had to have f uh, four muffers. They keep you the number of thrush mofer, you know, two and two. They go into a big and out. It's in the edge of city limits, so they race a big half mile track. And so it's funny to get up there and they had hay bales, square bales, <laughs> stacked up there like the highest telephone poles with like war on both sides. Then you had the fence, the fence here, track, wall, fence, wooden fence. Then this hay, <laughs> but they made a road in between the wood and the edge, you know, so you, you know, you could go around if y'all take. And the decimal meter had to be 80 something. Man, that's just, that's really hard to get it to. But them muffers would do it. And I tell you, that's the best race I ever raced in. And my ears wasn't ringing. I said, I got these in. Oh, it rings. Oh, it'd ring a whole week, it'd ring. <laughs> it, uh, but it, 
We went faster. I said, I said on the pole up there, new track record. And that 57 Chevrolet, they were going to let me run it. He said, well, you got to go to the hobby pits. I said, no, this is a late model car. And just by luck, and I'll never to this day know how he went there, the NASCAR official was in Trenton, New Jersey. I mean, uh, Baltimore up there, Maryland. <laughs> and he was at the racetrack. And so the guy called him to come down. He, he read the rule book to him. It's been restated for two more years, hmm. 57s. And, man, we laughed that thing. It, uh, it paid good money, too, a lot of money. It's 200 lap race. And he gave me a little extra to come up there to beat the regular runner. <laughs> then I went back three more times after that, that 57. And, uh, yeah, we won, uh, I think, 29 races in it. Uh, that car, won, I won 45 races in that 77 right there, that Nova. No, it's this right here. I won. It's, that's not the, that's a Chevelle, and this is a Nova. See, that's the, the later time they come out with. Yeah. But that, I had two of these, just alike. And I, I made enough money to have me two, so I could run one Thursday night, the other one Friday night, then go back and run the first one Saturday night, and then Sunday. And we raced nice choice. Minnesota, State Fair, Minnesota, and uh, all over the country. Is that one of those Chevelles that Dale Earnhardt ended up with? Yeah. he came up here, him and his mother. <laughs> and they were so much alike. I went to Hickory, a big race at, at the end of the season, and Buddy Baker, and I'd run Nashville, 500 lapper. I just finished on Sunday, and this is next Sunday at Hickory. You know, I didn't go through it much, you know, because I got my hood, and Buddy Baker, he, he run it. He run really good. Uh, something happened there at the last. I don't remember what it was. But uh, it, so then uh, we kept winning. About every week we go and win uh, two, maybe three, a lot of times. And so Earnhardt, he, he called me. His mother called me. And uh, him and his brothers come up here, and her and a, a, a guy she was kind of seeing then. And he made them little old sandwiches. You went in a little triangle looking sent, you put them with quarter in or whatever machine. Mm -hmm. So he started all that. And the <laughs> try 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 me or something like that. And so they come up here and Dale wasn't at seventeen. And uh, they come up here he just skinny. <laughs> and they bought that car. That's one of them Chevelles right there. This one right here, that was my oldest one. And uh, I'd won, I'd won forty five races in it. And uh, his mother said, we'll take the car if you take it over to Hickory and let him run some. He ain't never run on asphalt. Yeah. So I loaded it up out here, and we go over to Hickory, and the boy helped me. Uh, we go over there. We unload, and Dale got in there. <laughs> he was crazy wild. Yeah, he thought he was running dirt again. I reckon it. He'd just slide sideways and pat the gas and whoa, whoa, you know. And, uh, he come in. I said, Dale, I'm going to stand there. You got to back off before I'm at because when you're patting that gas, somebody's in it. They're going to go right by you. And he come by and I'll be staring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I spent about two hours over there. And I said, I'll load on the trailer. And uh, I told his mother, I'll take it where you are. Boy, I'm going home. He'll take it where you want to go to. And I know stuff here no more. It ain't getting no better. <laughs> he, he, he was so slow. You can't spin any on, on asphalt. And, uh, I learned that right on the quick, too. And I had that uh, 57 right there. That was a good car. I bought it from Elmer Keyen over here. And uh, first I went to Hickory. See, they asphalt Hickory in 60, uh, 67. Ned Jarrett come in there. It was dirt. And 4th of July, he announced we're going to start paving right after the race, and it'll be ready in a week. <laughs> and so I went over there, and I done the same thing, you know, been running that dirt. Well, that was okay if you run again the regular runners, but Asheville was asphalt, a couple tracks. Well, them boys come down here and didn't have no scales, and light, real light cars, and uh, I just run hard as I could. I, I, I done good. I finished third. Then next week, I finished third. Well, Jack Ingram was winning the races, and his brother Tom 
was running second, <laughs> and I'd run third. And I had gone, so I just spinning like that, just like drifting, you know. <laughs> and, uh, so anyway, Tom he come up to me. Uh, Jack didn't say much, you know. And old Tom he come up and said, "I'm gonna tell you something you need to know." And Tom, uh, he built engines too. He he built me an engine too, you know. And I got to know him pretty good. He said, "You can't beat Jack." But said, "You can beat me if you just won't mash that throttle down so hard." <laughs> <laughs> and I did, and I run second. And so then uh, I still spent, a, and a promoter, uh, Ashford, called me up. He said, "I'll give you a hundred dollars. You'll come up here and run. It's a smaller track." But you got to do the same thing, you got to go ahead because smoke a tire. <laughs> so I go up there and uh, I smoke the tires around there, you know. I finished second and he gave me a hundred and I think I won 250, <laughs> you know. Next week he only come back and he gave me a hundred. Well, man, in Columbia gave me a hundred. Go down on Thursday night, they went and pay you five, about, well, about 400 in first place. So I went back up there and I, but when I went up there the first time, Jack Ingram, he went, He's always sticking his thumbnail in your tire. And he's run good years when we run Firestone. He said, but you need to, where'd you get these tires? Well, a guy here in town was helping me. He'd get all the old tires from Winston Cup and he'd cap them, put the dirt track, big peanut cap on them. Hmm. But the tires he was getting was good, but there's a difference in a half mile tire and a Daytona tire. So Jack said, where did you get these tires? And I told him from Goodyear, he said, these are Daytona tires. Well, I, I run pretty good, then I run pretty good second time. Well, now I ain't got but four, uh, I ain't got no spare tire. And so I had a left rear tire was flat. And we didn't have no way to go. And so Jack, he loaned me. He said, you gotta have a T16, that's a special tire. Well, he loaned me his left rear tire and put on the car and it was a T16 soft, that's the numbers. It's thick as what it pulls up. <laughs> and I won the first ra asphalt race up there. <laughs> Barring the left rear tire from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Just one tire? <laughs> it, uh, but then I, it, the whole deal was tires. You got to have the right tires. All these trophies was, in, I got a full basement in my house. And I am stacked to everywhere. <laughs> I first had the mirrors the car garage there, you know, it was, it was paneling, and it's got a bathroom there, you know. We didn't have one up there then. And uh, so what I done, uh, I just put some mirrors on one wall and put shelves and glass shelves. And then it just filled up, bam, bam. You had three walls and two garage doors. <laughs> so I took them, put them down in the basement, had an S10 pickup truck, and then I built this place here. I put them mirrors down through there, just like I had up yonder. Yeah, the, that way you don't have to mess no more with them. Cause them trophies ain't as simple as you think. You stand there and stand there, and you don't move them. When you try to move them, they stuck to that glass. <laughs> but the rod comes out of them. They hold the trophy, they fall apart sitting. Oh, wow. Did you see uh, his 85 IROC championship trophy? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, my wife, she says, she thinks them mirrors are dirty. They are, but you don't notice it, do you? No. Mm -hmm. She just had a fit. I, what happened, see, here's a rod. It just comes unfastened. I don't know which trophy it come off of, but, but they stick to the floor. And um, my sister was doing this here to start with. See, you see, see here. Whoa. It's just dust, it's normal. And, uh, <laughs> it ain't worth changing. I told her, I, I told me, here I had my sister come and I said, you see how I've got, I, I have to go by weight. See, it laps over here. This is a heavy trophy. And I'm heavy and I put, I don't put in the middle. And uh, I told her, I, and she had her daughter, which was about 16. So they started over here. And you got to set them off just like they're there. Cause see, this goes back here. So you got room here. Or you stand a half a day trying to find where you can put one back in. Hmm. <laughs> I come here, that thing, that top shelf fell down. It took up two shelves. <laughs> <laughs> and so then just to uh, see here, that yeah. went bad sitting here. And uh, these here ain't as bad, though.
but they stick to the floor. Peggy, well, my wife, she said, they said, you going to take them down to that dirty place? I said, well, you got to realize I work on cars in here, you know. <laughs> And the doors is open a lot and in and out. And I said, I said, them, you can't even see the mirror. I'd just be wasting time. I said, you know what it take to take all these trophies down? And she said, then take and get them all fixed. <laughs> 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 you can't just throw them in the trunk of a car or nothing. You know, you got to have them. You have to be so easy. It's just not, all this stuff, uh, you would think it'd be nice to do that there. But uh, see, they're stuck to the glass right there. Oh yeah, but it's I didn't ever think about having this many trophies, but like I say it's just half uh, if we'd got one every time we won a race, but a lot of them you got to give away you know somebody you drive a car and you win the race and somebody sick, you know, so you give it to the man that usually the promoter wants them you know, but I didn't think that much about them until I got this all done and uh I think, heck, I couldn't have used no more than way. <laughs> See, some of the things right here are races you won, but it wasn't nothing but them things up there, you know. And there wasn't big trophies or a plaque. And then you get the plaques out there on the other night there, you give you a plaque. That's what you got mostly was a plaque. Uh, for a long time, that was in the big deal, the plaques. Get pole awards and, you know, things like that. What are some of your favorites? Uh, trophy? Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't even think about it. <laughs> uh, i tell you a, a good one. That's how we won that Iowa Rock race. Yeah. And, uh, uh, see, Terry, Terry, he used to race, he used to be uh, kindly in with us in the Winston Cup there for a while. And uh, was teammates for a while for, for Phil Parsons. <laughs> and uh, so we both got an Iowa Rock race. So we was at Michigan. And... Uh, we had run two races before that, and uh, I'd finish second and third. And then, so uh, the, the next race was at Michigan. And so uh, I didn't even think about any points or anything like that. And so my car, you practice in a car, everybody practices in the same one car. And it ain't that many, 12. And uh, so, you don't get to drive the car you're going to drive until the race starts. And so I take off and you draw for a position. I think I draw the pole and Terry was second. But what they do, they make it like we run races you know, Skinner, skinny tires. Indy drivers, Unser and all them, they didn't do that good. You know, I mean, usually a NASCAR guy usually win the championship. And so, but this is a whole different the Camaros then is more different than our car. They don't want them to spin out, so they make them tight. Well, the longer you run, and it's pushing a little, it builds up pressure in your right front tire, hmm. and it gets real big in the right side. And you, you can't, if it does that, it, it just kills that car. Hmm. But they, you're not going to spin them out hardly unless somebody bumps you. So anyway, we're at Mexican racing, and you can't run, if you're leading the race, you can't, if you, you win half the race, 20, it's 50 laps at Michigan. And uh, that was 100 miles or something. Anyway, you, you, uh, I was trying to save my right front tire. So I led to 26th lap. Then I let Terry go by me because my car seemed to be turning more RPM by far than what I practiced in. And we go down the bike stretch. And, and so I, I'm halfway, so you get more points for that. So getting down to about 10 lap to go, and I'm just firing over Terry, you know, around there. And we was way out front. And so I get ready to, uh, getting close to the white flag. And so I'm gonna give it a run here and see, you know. Dang, it seemed like I went out and I wasn't gonna be able to pass him in a whole lap. It's gonna take at least a full lap. So if I wave the white flag, I'm, if I do one thing or he does one thing, yeah, I, I could win or lose it that easy when I could have sat out front as long as I wanted to. But anyway, uh, we, we got down to the white flag. And, God oh, dang it, I hate to have such a good car. And he beat me here. But I didn't want to draft him down the back stretch. I think that picks him up too. If I get real close, I just sit back like this. And I said, I got one shot. He's going to go straight to the bottom. 
everybody does on that last lap, especially the big tracks like Michigan, Daytona. <laughs> so back then, Michigan had like this asphalt. I had cracks in it. Mm -hmm. They put this tar like this is. Well, as you went all day long, it smeared it. Hmm. And it's slick, but it's so you go <laughs> like it. it uh, so, but nobody rode real high. And so I just kept following Terry to the inside, the inside. Then I back up a little ways right before we got there and I give it all I got. Now, I just, I was hoping he was going to try to block me down low. Well, he did. That way it gave me a shot to go around and just leave it down, go high, but I can't turn it. it uh, it's just going to push. And it ain't going to spread out though. It will like it. I come off the corner and he's way down here. And I just stay dead all the way off and I'll beat him. <laughs> but I, I just lucky. Uh, it, it was such a hard deal to manage them things when you don't run uh, but three, like three, supposed to be four races, but I think it rained out one, and then we just run three. Yeah, that we, won that we won the race, so I thought that was it. But I tied with Darrell Walter for the championship, and then they go fall back to the highest finisher in the, the last race. And so I won it, and he finished fifth. <laughs> and, Gail was there at the winter circle, and they told me Ned Jarrett and the, the man that's in charge, they come up to winter, I'd get out of the car and they'd come on to the winter, come on up here to the winter circle. Don't get out of the car wait till you get out. And Ned says, uh, you won this whole thing, championship and all. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, I'm pretty sure. I said, if I get out of this car and get a trophy, I ain't giving it back. <laughs> so I called out of the car and they were, they were, they were protesting there, but it's black and white. Highest finisher and was the time they went to the highest finisher. Yeah, I, I, that trophy, I'll tell you, don't even know where it's at. But I was going to ask you where it is. I, I didn't see uh, it. I'll show you, let's see if I can find it. I went to Australia. Junior Johnson sold uh, Australia in a couple of cars. They won't be good there and drive that car. They put the day in front of the, uh, on the, on the date, no, the month, they reverse it. Yeah. But it's just an old, it's not a pretty trophy, it's just an old pot. This here was, uh, get that out there in Minnesota. And, uh, I was hunting that thing, yeah, here it is, here it is. I finished third in the race, the exhaust pipes fell off. We was right out of line. <laughs> Call New Park. Yeah, it was December the 18th, right before Christmas. Hot, good Lord, it was so hot you couldn't stand it. That's their date of their summer. And I'll say, the flies, the wind blows all the time, it'll stick to you. <laughs> yeah, until you about have to hit them. You don't do that. And I didn't even put, I don't ever use the water in a car, in a bush car, 300 miles. On Saturdays, I, I just put one in Sunday. But you know, you don't know you can go 300 miles and not have to worry about it. And, uh, <laughs> over there, I didn't put no water in there. Here's 105. <laughs> and them exhaust pipes fell off. I thought I was, I think I'd have won the thing. It ended up third, and I'm sure, and uh, Morgan drove the 75 car. He had one the year before that with uh, Neil Bonnet. And uh, cause my car, the longer I run, it's just like Rockingham track was. It, it got, uh, see, it couldn't even, I had to qualify it and hadn't even been in it and had 30 minutes left when I get to Australia. <laughs> and I'd been flying for 36 hours, got out of the plane, went there, you know, had the car, and it's an old junk car, perfectly had up there. But wasn't junk, it's just different, and the junior didn't ever use it. it uh, so I made, I, they let me make a couple laps, it was all over with. I made a couple laps right there, and got us a time, I think it was about six, and uh, I told that boy at the time of our I said, there's something bad wrong with this thing steering. And uh, I said, ain't no, he said, we ain't got nothing but just a little toolbox, just ship them in containers, a little brown container, and you just got couple of tires and wheels and a little toolbox. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I said, look at the shocks and something, there's something really off. So I went to the hotel and uh, they ain't got no hamburgers over there, you get mutton. And I was just starving. I flew all night, 36 hours, all day and all night. And I walked in that hotel room and I sat down on the bed with my cap on, on the bed and I, uh, Got the phone here and called home. He a day difference and a day in some air. Then I fell back on the bed. I woke up the next morning. I still had my cap on. 
Yeah. You know, and my legs fr couldn't bend them. <laughs> and I got up and they called me and said, we're ready to go. Well, you, you couldn't order nothing to eat. Uh, you ain't never heard of ham and eggs, salt and stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, it, I was, uh, it was good. Looks about like going to Knoxville, kind of hilly around Melbourne. Hmm. But they all walk. They all walk. The street's got a big old circle thing, you know, you see, and you, you exit off, but they're going the wrong way. So if you're going across the street, you know, you ain't looking. You're looking this way. Maybe it's coming this way sure. on the wrong side of the street. And going to the racetrack that day, I just, God, I hope we don't meet nobody. Because you're sitting here at the white line, the passenger, caught that car we was in, an American car, going to the racetrack. It seemed funny sitting there and there, somebody comes by. <laughs> and you ain't got no steering wheel in front of you. <laughs> but uh, some place so much I've been out besides Canada, but it ain't nothing like living here. <laughs> <laughs> I come in here sometimes, once a year maybe, and just look at some of them here. Cause I can pretty much play it back. We uh, won this right here. I was driving for a half Wilkesboro race. And, uh, All these here, you see, you post to shine them up and all, but I don't, they just like it was, and I put them up there. Most of that there was championships at Hickory and Columbia and Asheville, Metrolina. <laughs> see here, this is a modified division. Well, see, I didn't run much, but I won just about every one I'd run. And see here, this, I, this was at Daytona. They used to have the Ward's Bank up down there. When you went down to the race, you stay up there at old Hilton, or you'd go up there to the wards. But you run the same car all over the whole United States. So the vote come from the United States. So we wanted, I walk in there to the wards bank, we just went in to eat. <laughs> and so we won the most popular driver in the United States. Both these here, same year, modified in the late model sportsman. But I won it again though. There's nothing somewhere right here. First one I seen, then next year I win them too. Uh, but that's pretty, that's, that was pretty important, really. Uh, but you don't get in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it don't matter how many races you win. You know, I think that uh, we, you know, it, we've been pretty popular uh, all through the years and all. More than a whole bunch of them that just quit and quit left, you know. We kept doing it and doing it and doing it for years with Skull. And at the racetrack, other drivers, I'd still, they want you to come there. Okay, they pay you to go, you know. I thought it was a big deal, you know, but it, uh, then that's the rock thing, I think, right there. That's 85. And, uh, <laughs> I'll tell you a funny, funny story. I'll answer them, uh, his brother. They done the same thing I was doing for the companies back then. I'm signing autographs somewhere or another, big, big deal. Well, down the, right down the road with several drivers, there's A.J. Foyt, and Copenhagen sponsored him. That's our company today. Then I'm in the parking lot that next day at a convention, convention center. <laughs> Here comes old, he comes in, Unser's brother. He comes in tall, he's older. He come in there, and uh, he come up there to me. We was getting out together. How you doing, yeah, been busy? I said, yeah, but see, uh, we was giving away stuff, you know, and they just sign like that. They'd give away all kind of trinkets. They just come by there, you know, and sign them pictures. And one he said, "They pay you pretty good for this." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, probably a lot more than I'm worth." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we just play jokes all the time like that, you uh, know. AJ Fort down there too. I'd send him a note down. I'd say, "Take us down to AJ." And, he, it, but they both done it for like I was doing it for Scott Mannheim more than I did at the, all them auctions. Yeah, that, that's, it was a fun deal. Everything we've done was pretty good. So we were at Harry's house from probably like one o'clock until eight thirty, and he was telling stories the entire time. We filmed almost all of it, so this is not even close to all the footage we have from that. After we were done in the garage, we went over to where his office is, where he had scrapbooks. And he flipping through the scrapbooks, talking about telling stories of going on crew vacations with Hal Needham and 
guys like that and all the pictures in it that you've never seen before. And um, that's gonna be its own video. We'll show a little teaser of that right now. I had a Camaro and we had it about done. He said, I'll give you new, new sheet metal for that car. If you put our name and put an eagle on the hood and call it a G, uh, Trans Am, <laughs> <laughs> so I I cut my front end off and uh, fenders and stuff. And they got that big eagle on the hood. And it, what we did, you see how this looks here in front? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, there's a bumper underneath that. And you didn't know it, but a GTO, you see it, it looked kind of a little like that, not hardly, but it's rubber. But behind it is a steel bumper. And so we brought that thing in here, and it, no no plastic on it. And I cut it in the middle and pulled it out, and I told that boy working with me, I said, hold that piece, put a jack stand over there and over there. Then I cut the ends off, see here, and brought it in here. I cut three inches here and three here and cut it. <laughs> and I said, you know what I'm doing? Well, I figure you just messed up a brand new bumper. <laughs> <laughs> then I put it together and welded it. Then I pulled everything out for make it aerodynamic. We're at my mom's house for Thanksgiving right now, which is why the setting of everything that has been recorded is strange. But we wanted to show you the new shirt we just put on stapletonautoworks.com. It looks like Bobby Allison's 1988 Buick with the Stavola Brothers type logo because I always thought the logo was awesome looking. And you know we love the... And the gold is like metallic. Yeah, you it's, can't actually, really, here, it's actually lean metallic. Back, so maybe it, you can see, yes, you can see it much better now. Yeah. That is so cool. Just put those on there. We don't have a ton of them though. So if you want one, jump on it quickly because we don't have the infrastructure to have tons of inventory. Go to stapletonautoworks.com and we will get yours packed quickly in time for Christmas. Be good Christmas presents for your friends or somebody. Or I your kids. Know. Yeah. Family. So we got stickers, all hats. I don't have one of the hats. I actually forgot to bring a hat, which is why I'm wearing this hat because I got messed up hair, but yeah. I just wanted to say that I had lots of questions for Harry, but I didn't feel comfortable yelling at him so that he would hear me ask the questions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, because he, you know, he's been around a lot of, uh, got it out. He's been, a, uh, <laughs> Harry has been around a lot of really loud race cars for a long time. And that did a number on his hearing, I think. So anytime I'd have to ask him a question, he couldn't hear me, even if I yelled at him. So I just tried not to ask him questions. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, most of those older guys don't have very good hearing <laughs> anyway. I'm kind of soft-spoken anyway. It'd be cool to have a TV this big someday. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy is like, the camera doesn't actually show how big it looks. Like it looks much smaller. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, this is the video we did with the Wood Brothers at the their museum. If you haven't seen that, you should go watch that too. And make sure you're subscribed. Subscribing is not like a magazine, it doesn't cost anything. It just means when you open YouTube, it's gonna show you our new video, which would help you find it because I think you wanna see it. And hit thumbs up, that helps too. Shelby is having fun. She says, help history grow. Go to stapletonautoworks.com, hit thumbs up on this video, tell your friends, and uh, leave a comment and all those things. Okay. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>